Hello, everyone. Uh, it's my honor. Uh, it's my honor to talk about uh, to to join the Open Source Summit in North America uh, and to talk about our session today. So today we will talk about an uh, interesting topic about Kubernetes as a service, the open source cloud on ARM64. And uh, uh, today uh, we also have Xin Liang from Linaro here to to talk about uh, this topic. Actually. Now, Kubernetes is running everywhere uh, on top of the cloud, and uh, uh, and now uh, it has a it has been a very famous service on on different cloud uh, vendors. But actually, for the M64 platform, and uh, if you want to run in an open source cloud, maybe yeah. So we we have offered this uh, uh, good solutions. So uh, just to have a brief introduction. So uh, I'm Kevin Zhao. Uh, I'm from Linaro Data Center and the Cloud Group. And now I'm a tech leader of the cloud infrastructure. So uh, uh, my uh, 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 I'm I, I'm working on something related with uh, Kubernetes and OpenStack and Ceph. So uh, and here is Hi. my information um, about, about, about yeah. email, IRC, and Slack. And um, um, okay. yeah, I'm working uh, in Linux two uh, with uh, Kevin, and we are uh, all working on our uh, server and for the data center and cloud and software. <coughs> yeah, this is my email and my, my IRC, and you can uh, uh, talk to us uh, if you have any uh, um, uh, stop. Or question? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So let's come to next. So uh, some of you may know that uh, what is uh, Linaro. I just want to give a brief introduction. Uh, Linaro is a ARM-based uh, ecosystem uh, open source organization. So we are dedicated for offering the uh, open source project for uh, the ARM ecosystem. So not only for the embedded system, but also for the data center and cloud. So here is the introduction about the Linaro LDCG. So we are focused on the server ecosystem. And uh, we have several members now, as you can see that this is on the bottom of the slides. And we are now working on several famous open source software for the ARM servers. So uh, in the server architecture, we have UEFI, ACT, and Server Ready. Besides, we have a big data group to working on the uh, Big Top, the Hadoop, and Spark. And uh, we have a cloud infrastructure group. Yeah, that is Xinya and I working on. We are focusing on the Kubernetes, OpenStack, and Scythe on the ARM um, ecosystem. So besides, we are searching uh, and approaching for the scalable AI framework and the novel approaches. Uh, besides, we are running a Linaro developed cloud. So that is a enterprise class unpowered server hosted that in UK and uh, available for the development test and CI. So we can offer the VM based instance and also offer the Kubernetes as a service. So uh, if you have the interest on working with the ARM based ecosystem, we are welcome to open, uh, well, 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 welcome uh, you to registration. So we are totally based on free cloud and benefit to the upstream. So here is a uh, several good projects that we are working on. And uh, I've, I've just talked before, so I will generally go through the slides. Uh, the next is uh, general information about our Linaro Develop Cloud. So the Develop, the develop Cloud is used totally on uh, on top of the OpenStack side. So actually, actually for building a private cloud, uh, private cloud uh, platform, yeah, OpenStack is the only solution now. Actually, so on top of OpenStack, we have offering offering the uh, overlay service for Kubernetes, and uh, now we are. Aim to 
enable the IoT edge and cloud ecosystem to develop port test and enable the CICD for the ARM architecture. So, yeah. So now we are the OpenStack powers and uh, all our resources are open to the totally out, uh, open source community. Okay. So today we have this, we have talked about the three parts. As we know that we are talking about the open source cloud on the open source Kubernetes service on ARM64. So uh, we we should uh, focus on the about two parts. So first is actually we could not avoid a, the infrastructure as a service. Uh, yeah, actually uh, in the public cloud side you can choose yeah some uh, some public cloud vendors, famous vendors to to get the infrastructure service. But if we want to build up a totally open source platform, so we need to totally do that. A config network do these infrastructures on our own. So oh, uh, in the first part, we will uh, talk about the infrastructure as a service. So besides uh, is our, yeah, Mungo is about to introduce how we have done to make the Kubernetes as a service works on top of OpenStack on the ARM64 platform. And in the last part, uh, I will, uh, we will talk about the, how is the Kubernetes path level and with the OpenStack ice level integration with each other, uh, Kubernetes how to leverage the OpenStack resources to uh, offer the offer the uh, abilities to the end users. So next, I will hand over to Xin Liang. So he will talk about the the infrastructure level first. Okay, um, please help me to uh, switch uh, to slide seven. Uh, let me uh, come to okay. the first part. Yeah, the first part is uh, in this part we will uh, share how we build uh, our infrastructure service. Next slide. Uh, yeah, uh, this is the, our infra uh, service solution structure. Uh, we use OpenStack uh, to build the uh, infra infra service. No and um, out of two trace. It is all open source. On the right hand side uh, the bottom or on the uh, left hand side in the bottom uh, you can see we are all uh, run our service on the our on uh, our vendors uh, um sixty four servers. Uh, for the storage, storage we use uh, Ceph, and open that we will use the latest uh, stable, latest stable uh, version, uh, and we will keep uh, upgrading, uh, up, 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 and uh, once uh, a new uh, stable version comes out, yeah. And on the right hand side. Uh, and it's our uh, monitor uh, uh, tools and our deploy tools. Yes, this is the uh, infra service structure. <coughs> okay, next. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is our um, neighbor solution. Yeah, as, as you can see, uh, we mainly use uh, three numbers. Um, on the top, uh, on top, the external network uh, used uh, by network node and to apply internet access. And in the middle, the control uh, network uh, used by each node for uh, control network flows. This is uh, ma uh, meaning uh, the API uh, flow of the uh, the system. And the other uh, network is the it's internal network used by the computer compute, uh, storage nodes for the data or 
application uh, never flows. Yes, this is the never uh, solution uh, we are building. So next. Uh, this is our uh, deployment uh, solution. Uh, we use a uh, Cola container deployment method, which is very cool and amazing. And it packages uh, each component into the container image, which makes uh, deployment quick and easier. It also supports online uh, upgrade. Yeah, we have a uh, release. Uh, the ARM 64 uh, Docker image on on this uh, uh, Docker hard links. All the upstream events, uh, they are all uh, based on the tapping uh, base image. Now we have uh, released uh, open step, locky um, state and tray version. And for that, we have released um, L and N version. Yeah. And also, uh, we uh, for the uh, for the uh, we we also uh, deploy uh, develop a uh, tool uh, made with type of research to uh, management our bare metal machine. Yeah, it is like a Math of the Upen uh, Upen two uh, uh, bare metal management solution. Yeah, this is the deployment solution. Next, next slide, please. Yeah, this is uh, the monitoring uh, solution. You can see uh, our uh, solution is uh, uh, Fana and plus the uh, Mephias, and then some um, OpenStack exporters. Yeah, we have uh, developed uh, OpenStack exporters to collect uh, OpenStack metrics for uh, the per yeah, this is a set sort of the um, uh, uh, the the op uh, open stat, uh, status and uh, that yeah. This is uh, the uh, monitor and uh, solution. Next, uh, yeah. Now we have uh, done before is uh, we have uh, got the OpenStack uh, power and uh, certific certification. Yeah, we are we have passed all the uh, OpenStack uh, test tube, and we also uh, donate. Uh, our cloud to the open the open the uh, CI. They are use uh, now uh, the upstream are using our cloud to uh, uh, do the ARM thirty four server uh, validation. Yeah. Yeah. This is the uh, our uh, infrastructure service. Uh, Solution. Next slide. This uh, next slide. <clears throat> yeah. The second part uh, we will talk about uh, the Kubernetes uh, service uh, on our on our stack. Next slide. Yeah, this is the Kubernetes service solution, etc. So uh, look at the middle. 
on the middle. Uh, as you can see, uh, we mainly use a uh, magnet project to build our Kubernetes service, which uh, also utilize heat to create infra uh, resources and also a area for the load balance service. And on the left hand side, that is a uh, open step uh, cloud provider for Kubernetes to use the infra uh, resource such as uh, the volume, uh, load balance uh, service, and so on. Yeah, and this is uh, uh, the uh, Kubernetes service uh, solution structure. Next. Uh, Yeah, this is the uh, uh, the mechanism project, uh, which uh, how we build our Kubernetes service. Uh, for the mechanism uh, node, as you can see, there is a RESTful API uh, service served to serve the API's request, and then and then pass all the requests to the con conduct conductor to handle the Kubernetes service uh, creation. And also uh, create the required uh, infra resources. And the mechanism uh, mainly use a heat uh, template to uh, create the lower layer uh, infra uh, resources. And all the uh, Kubernetes uh, service uh, will run on uh, the VN instance on the uh, right hand side. Yeah, this is the mechanism uh, architecture. Yeah, that's uh uh I will uh introduce uh the how we uh create our Kubernetes service. Uh for uh to create a um, Kubernetes service first we need to uh uh create a template. Yeah, a template uh, will uh, uh, via uh, command line or uh, from the Horizon UI. We can spe uh, set specify uh, many uh, parameters. Parameters, yeah. So you can see, for example, the coop the coop version and the uh, locking key and. Uh, and and uh, uh, which uh, network uh, solution something uh, like that. Next, uh, once we keep next, uh, next slide, please. Okay, once we uh, create a template is created, uh, then we can uh, create a Kubernetes service. That is a Kubernetes cluster. Yes, uh, we can uh, also uh, check uh, some uh, parameters from the template, such as uh, how many master nodes we want to uh, create and how many uh, what can know we we want to uh, create.
create. Okay, this is a, a brief uh, introduction uh, of the Kubernetes service. Next, I would like to uh, welcome my colleague Kevin to give more detail on how Kubernetes and OpenStack uh, integration. Yes. Kevin, uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, okay. Thank you, Xinliang. So uh, next, I will talk okay. about the uh, detailed uh, creation for this uh, precise. So uh, uh, for the for the production level uh, use case, for the production level use case, it will be uh, essential for the uh, Kubernetes has a multi-master, multi-master node, right? So, uh, so, so that the, 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 we we need to create multi uh, load balancers for the different master. Uh, and traditionally, if you have a public cloud vendors, they view uh, serve this uh, and offer the load balancer service for you. And uh, we have now built our open source cloud on our uh, on top of OpenStack, so we need to serve for OpenStack. Uh, Sig for OpenStack help for offering the uh, the load master service. Uh, in the left part in the picture, you can see that uh, it is a general precise about creating the, the load balancer. And in the right side, uh, it's a data model for these uh, load balancer services. I will give a detailed introduction. Uh, for for example, if we have a two, uh, if you have two need to export. Oh, sorry. We can see that uh, for the first uh, is the listener one, it will w listen for the port 18, 80, and the listener two will listen for the port 443. And uh, each listener will uh, serve for its, uh, its listener service. And uh, for each listener, is there have a pool so for pool one, it will have an anchor. So this anchor is a virtual machine and running with HTTP proxy to proxy the different uh, to proxy the HTTP request to the different backends. And on the bottom of the picture, we can see there are two VMs. So each VM will have running the applications here, right? So the VM one and VM two both had running the port has the uh, application running to listen for the full port about the 80 and for 443. So uh, this is the data model totally for the Octavia. So if you have a rotate service, it will come from the uh, uh, listener one and uh, it be uh, and will be proxied to this real VM backend. So uh, that is the general uh, data models for this load balance server and. Uh, it will be used to it will be used to create the load balancer for the Kubernetes uh, cluster. We know that the Kubernetes uh, API server uh, usually use the port two three seven uh, sorry uh, six four four three right, and etcd are used two three seven nine, and they need to be exposed to the uh, outside uh, API for for the outside API request. And also, they, they need to be accessed by this uh, by the Kubernetes. So uh, we will create. We can say in the process, we will uh, create the uh, Octavia, create the anchor for the uh, the Kubernetes API, Kubernetes API, and also and also it, it will create the different rules, create the listener, create the pool. And also add as a member to the pool. So, uh, so in in this in this picture, we can see that this is totally for uh, this is totally for the load balancer creation, and this is a fundamental step for creating the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, let's come to the next slide. So after yeah, the next slide is totally uh, totally steps for the magnum uh, magnum creation and the create a load balancer uh, is in, has been inserted to this totally precise. So uh, so 
first, uh, when we create and when, when we want to get the Kubernetes cluster, we should prepare the resources. To, yeah, because it is a, a tenant based uh, multi tenant support for OpenStack and other, yeah, uh, actually the InfraStack as a service. So it needs to set up the network, the virtual network for this different tenant and uh, configure the security group rules uh, to make it secure. And after that, the Magnum will sign the TLS search for the uh, Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, just it's just you can cheat it like the Kubernetes does for the Kubernetes cluster to send a TLS search. And after that, if you uh, call the Octavio to create the load balancer and configure rules. So after we got the load balancer, we can see that now they need to create the master node and the process is very simple. So uh, it will uh, pre provision the virtual machine and after, we pro after the VM provision, uh, it will call the cloud image into this uh, cloud init script to run the specified jobs. For example, it's very it's a significantly job is use the system D to launch the Kubernetes cluster. So we can see uh, the uh, the the Kubernetes API server and control manager. So both of them are be launched by system D and managed by system D and also by Podman. So uh, after that, the Kubernetes master has been launched, and uh, the other essential common, uh, components, for example, the network driver container and the cloud provider container will be launched after well, uh, after the precise. So uh, after the master creation finished, it will kick off the precise for create the worker. So the, the worker are, the, are also the same precise that you use the system D to provision these uh, control, uh, this uh, essential system containers. And also after that, it will, it will join to the, the master, to the total cluster. So uh, the difference, uh, we are using the system D and the Postman to manage the totally uh, containers. That is a little different with the traditionally using the Kubernetes static pool method, yeah. Uh, because that we are actually using Magnum and Magnum support the federal COS operation system. And, and this operating system are, are uh, traditionally have a very good competition, uh, sorry, uh, compatible with the system D and Postman. So it is very easy to use and manage. So, okay. We can see that it is general information about creation, right? So, but we can see that is a little complicated and uh, traditionally, and uh, usually you can see that it is much more complicated than the QADM, right? So actually, yeah, that's right. But actually for the QADM, it cannot uh, did the core the different resources uh, with the cloud provider, uh, with the cloud, uh, cloud provider side so uh, I, it can just uh, um, deploy a generally from a, a general cluster. But if you want to uh, interact with the cloud side, infrastructure side, yeah. So you, you need to actually thought about a different problem. So 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 in, inside OpenStack, the Magnum will be the easy solution. So here we come to this overview slides, right? So. Uh, uh, generally, in this overview slides, we can see that we can see that there is a three part of the network, uh, and the, the first is the exter external network. So that is for the external access and the public network access, right? And the private network. So all our cluster hosts are running connected with the private network. And uh, in the and the, the, the green line, we can see it's a container network. It's a traditional container network. For example, the capital or the waves. So you can also see this, there are three ingress, yeah, sorry, there are three load balancers. So these are the key points of this total cluster. So 
or you can see there is a API load balancer and an ETCD load balancer. So for the API, load balancer is served for uh, the uh, Kubernetes API server, and the ETCD load balancer is served for the ETCD. So uh, they have offered the capability if we, if the worker want to talk with the master, they cannot directly cannot connect it to this master one or two or three, even though they have connected in the private network. The worker need to uh, connect it to the load balancer first. And we know that the API load balancer has served for the master API server, uh, and the ATCD has served for the master ATCD, right? So the worker will, uh, so this load balancer are first act as the internal HA for the workers inside the private network. And also, if the users want to expose its application, it's exposed its cluster to the outside. Uh, so we, you, you, uh, the user need to mount a floating IP to this uh, load, load balancer, and after that, our Kubernetes cluster will have the outside access. Yeah, you, you can yeah you can use the Kubi control to connect it at either uh, at uh, at at uh, at the remote side. And in the right bottom, you can see it is an ingress load balancer. So that one is uh, served for the applications that are running inside the Kubernetes cluster to want to be want to be excised from outside. I will talk the detail in the following slides. Okay. So uh, so actually what is the difference with ARM64? Yeah, we can see that we have, we have talked about a lot of the OpenStack and Kubernetes and uh, even about Scythe. So what, ha what have we have done to make the totally Kubernetes cluster, Kubernetes service happen. Yeah, right. So first is uh, we, uh, the project we've done to make open site and site multi act support. So this has included a lot of the problem, uh, a lot of the deployment uh, issue checking and a lot of, uh, of the packaging and the enablement. So besides, we have validated and uh, the totally working precise and enable the totally Kubernetes service framework on top of the OpenStack on ARM64 platform. So after that, we've thought about a lot of problems about the production level, open source cloud upgrade and maintain. So besides, besides that, we will benefit to the upstream for the OpenStack and also for Scythe. And after that, now we are serving, we are working for the Kubernetes conformance ties on, on this uh, ARM-based uh, open source cloud. Yeah. Okay, so here is a, another, maybe the next uh, pending for our uh, Kubernetes as a service. I do know that if we want to create a very, uh, if we want to create a process for, yeah, totally uh, Kubernetes as a service, we need to create a lot of, pro a lot of the uh, load balancers and uh, create the master VMs for uh, for HA, right? But that will induce the problem about first is the slow creation process, and the other is yeah because the magnum are used for the actually uh, script management. So we need to change a lot of the code to maintain uh, when the OS upgrade or when the uh, Kubernetes upgrade and uh, and, and also even when, uh, uh, yeah, and, and also even even when the uh, total framework has been up upgrade, I mean the deployment for the framework. So it has a lot of dependence. So we are, and also if you want to have a HA cluster, you need to deploy three VM for master. That will be a little cost, cost uh, that, that will be a high cost for the end users, and not very convenient. So. Uh, on top of these, uh, this, uh, this, yeah, this advantage is maybe, yeah, so we have thinking about using another new approach to manage the Kubernetes. 
So we call it cubing cube. So actually, it is now a very famous method uh, in in the private cloud deployment. And as you may know, yeah, some, several companies are you also using this method. But in the OpenStack uh, world, open, OpenStack offered infrastructure as a service. That will be the first time. So I can give a generally in, uh, brief introduction. So for this, uh, we have divided into the cluster as a state cluster and the custom cluster. And state cluster with, is in, it has been launched by the admin users and in the admin network. And uh, the custom cluster is offered by, yeah, actually it is offered by other uh, tenants to use, uh, to, uh, who want to deploy their Kubernetes. So after that, uh, we can see that, uh, Actually, we can see that uh, there will there will be a there will be two key parts we need to consider. First is about the control plane containers, control plane components. So uh, in the master in the master the seed cluster, it has several worker nodes. So the worker nodes will serve as a host to running as the as the component as the uh, component. For example, the custom service, the custom ones cluster, right? These clusters, it gets server, etcd, and uh, other uh, a scheduler and something else will be running as a container inside the worker node in the C cluster. And, uh, and uh, there will be have a load balancer to connect it the admin, uh, to, to connect the C cluster network with the tenant, connect, uh, tenant uh, cluster network. So we can see that use this method. The most uh, it has solved a problem be, uh, is it will reduce the VM cost for the master for the custom right. So uh, it will save a lot of time to provision the totally uh, custom clusters. And even for state cluster, you can use the traditional method to create the uh, create the cluster. But for the custom cluster, the control plane container will running at the worker node, and also uh, the worker node will running at the new VM. So, so th this will solve the problem about the uh, high availabilities, and uh, the control plane container will uh, be maintained by the seed cluster from the uh, from the admin side. And the, but th this solution may have a problem. We, we are now working on to uh, eliminate th th this effect. Is this cluster is heavily dependent on the HA uh, the load balancer that, that we call it the Octavia service. So uh, we need to uh, we would to certify that this cluster will not have the performance issues. Yeah. Okay. Okay, next we'll come to the Kubernetes and OpenStack integration. It's generally, it's because we have a cluster and actually we are not running a Kubernetes and have a Kubernetes cluster, but it has running on top of the OpenStack side, on top of the infrastructure. So the Kubernetes may need to several resources from the totally uh, the infrastructures because yeah, it may need to the uh, volume it need uh, it need the authentication capability from as service and also it may need uh, it may need the network capabilities so we can see yeah how is the integration with each other so yeah uh, for yeah re re realizing this we have several uh, very important components each of them are the Kubernetes controller running inside Kubernetes clusters. So I've listed the component here, and we, we I will pick up several important contain, uh, components to give the introduction. So the first is the cloud controller manager. So uh, we know that the cloud provider has been changed, has been the code the code of the cloud provider has been refined due to it has a very deep. Uh, 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 
closely relation with the control manager API server and Kubernetes. So it has been refined and uh, uh, picked up from the uh, from the cloud provider uh, first version to refine to the new one. And it has several controllers. So each of the controller are served for the different resources. We can see in the uh, blue level in the blue block. Yeah, it ha it has a cloud controller. Cloud node controller, so that is uh, not only realize the node controller for functions traditionally, but also add several new functions. For example, the uh, the pod eviction policy, and uh, if if you monitor the infrastructure, the node, the infrastructure node status, and also do the CIDR management. So also it has a root controller, but because that we are not a traditionally uh, uh, Level two network, right? So it uh, we, we have different virtual virtual private networks. So the router network will the, the router controller is also very essential in the large scale public cloud side and private cloud side. And after that, there's a service controller that serves for the and call for the load balancer to do some interesting things I will talk about later. And the, the, the last one is the uh, persist volume level controller. So if you use the cloud provider to create the volumes. So in OpenStack side, we use the Cinder, we use the Cinder set the driver to call the resources from the OpenStack. Okay, next is a, uh, uh, Brief introduction uh, and is a general picture about the Octavia. As we talked before, the Octavia is a load balancer as a service, and if you take a very significant use in uh, for offer the uh, ex external network access to this cluster. So uh, we can just pay attention to the Amphor. Amphor is the VM that running with the HA proxy. So. It will serve as it will offer the load balance capabilities to the Kubernetes, and uh, yeah, so we can see that what is uh, how to realize uh, for if you want to running a application that inside your port to make access to the outside users or outside external uh, access. So first you have defined. We, we can see that you have defined the port. With a T server, right? Port one, port two has a T server, and the and there the T service. And port three, port four is a coffee server, and there is a coffee service, right? So for the service is an abstract way to expose an application running on a set of ports. Yeah, it is a very famous concept in Kubernetes. And we have also an ingress object. So ingress is a, allow the external users and clients to uh, access the HTTP service. So we can see that we have defined the ingress uh, object. There's a path T with the backend come to the T service, and there's a path coffee with the backend to come to the service with the coffee service, right? So and also they have a different service port. Yeah. Well, uh, what we've done is first we define the service with the node port, and after that the VM uh, the service will have the access will be easy access from the VM based node port, right? And here after that, uh, each of them will have a node port uh, exposed. And then we will have a very important component called Octavia ingress controller. So that one will be running at the Kubernetes to watch the uh, ingress object change. And after it watch the ingress object change, it will call the Octavia. It will call Octavia to create the amphor to create a listener for this to create a, actually a load balancer, right? To access uh, to connect it to this uh, to this ingress object, and after that, it will update the HA proxy rules. After we uh, after the creation success, uh, it will uh, it will mount a floating IP to this load balancer. And the, this load balancer will serve for the different node port, and the totally totally chain floating will be come to from the node port from the load balancer uh, that created by, by Octavia and come to the 
a target node port and then come to the port. So in that method, we can actually achieve the network, network solutions and uh, expose the, the capability for the uh, running applications port. Okay. Yeah. So here, yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, here is all our uh, our sessions today. Okay. Thank you very much to uh, attending this this session. And uh, if you have any questions, please, yeah, uh, any questions are welcome. And if you have any interest on the open source cloud on ARM64, and we are welcome you to register over the Nano Develop Cloud. Yeah, thank you. And we have one uh we have one question. So uh the first is uh our big data center uh move away from Intel to ARM. Yeah. So actually uh uh we can see that there is a good trend and uh, uh there are more and more uh cloud vendors are trying to use more uh infrastructures apart from Intel and, and uh, also ARM, uh, ARM servers now ha has several uh, good, good vendors over their, pro their product. And uh, actually the performance now uh, has been improved during the open source community, either from our member companies and also from, also from the, the upstreamers from the uh, open source community. So I, can, uh, I think it's a good trend, and uh, it has been. Uh, it, it will be uh, more and more cloud vendors to over the ARM-based servers and ARM-based uh, cloud uh, service. Yeah. Yeah. This may uh, the user have a second choice, uh, I think. 